another midweek special. What's going on? I tell you what's going on. I'm not working. Mike's got some time off work. The weather in the UK has just been glorious. And it is that time of year when everything starts to happen in the garden. So yeah, we've been down all day today. And uh, I've, I've just filmed a few bits and bobs. So I'm gonna show you, I've, I've put the first of my tomatoes out in the greenhouse. I'll show you that. Um, we've done our first strim of the year and also yeah just just on loads of bits and bobs i'm gonna i'm aware i haven't had a good little look around for a while so i'll show you around the greenhouse and show you what's coming on oh and i've done some tidying up oh yes and i've made some delicious tea so i'll show you that as well but yeah let's just have a look around My goodness look at that that has made such a difference it's given me quite um i don't know what feels like an uneasy sense of power but my goodness i do like a strim oh, what a lovely place to sit um right what i'm going to do today is start making some comfrey tea comfrey tea you think something like chamomile or maybe peppermint hmm not quite basically your comfrey plant is one of your biggest friends in the garden um, this one's only small because it's only started growing this year but it won't do any harm at all to start chopping it and we found out it's actually being grown you can't I don't know if you can pick it up from there but it's like a little half dolly tub a little metal dolly tub can you see which is really beautiful but obviously that's to contain the roots because it gets very long tap roots but the reason we love it in the garden is because it makes absolutely brilliant I'm sitting on this thorny thing oh heavens um brilliant fertilizer um you can use the leaves just as they are to line your trenches with we did that with potatoes one year we just lined all the potato trenches and it acted as uh, something that would help retain the water beneath the potatoes and also as it rotted down it acted as a fertilizer um, but the most common way I think people use it and tell me if I'm wrong here is actually fermenting the leaves in water so in fact this water <laughs> I don't know what this is like I don't want to taste it they've sniffed it and I'm pretty sure it is water it was in the shed when we moved in nine months ago so let's hope it was to be for this purpose it's yeah that's just fresh water nothing in towards there all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take from I suppose it doesn't really matter where you take it from but I'm gonna it's not gonna do the, the plant any harm to just start taking leaves from it they are so so hardy it's like um and you know think of your other tap-rooted friends the dandelion apparently you can make beautiful um dandelion tea sorry i thought there was smoke coming from over there then beautiful dandelion tea out of the roots and it tastes a bit chicory-ish we tried it one year it wasn't very nice anyway you can cut dandelions till the cows come home you think if, if you've got them in your garden and you strim over them they're back the next day so they're fairly hardy things because their roots are underground but basically yeah i mean all i'm doing is ripping these off and dunking them in the water this is my sort of gardening it's actually quite therapeutic uh, i don't need scissors i can just take them i know i'm not damaging the plant i hope i'm not damaging the plant will that be a thing I never show this area again I've damaged the plant and obviously the more you break them down the quicker they will break down in the water but you know that that I've done about a fifth there already 
And what we do now is put this somewhere for ooh, not very long, a couple of weeks if that. In fact, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Right, little stick, that was very handy. Little stick, give it a prod round. Stirry, stirry, stir. Try and make sure it's all submerged. You could just shake the bottle if you wanted to. And then, as that rots down, it'll rot into the water. And then what you'll do is you'll dilute it uh, about one to 10 fresh water and spread it on your plants. Um, if you've never smelt it before, if you've never smelt comfrey tea, oh hey, if you've never smelt comfrey tea, imagine the worst smell you have ever smelt in your life, then times it by, I don't know what, I don't know what. I mean, Rocky, bless him, the dog, rolled in some, I think it was fox poo the other day, and the smell was so bad you could almost taste it. It was, it, that's the sort of smell you're going to get from this. And the thing is, vile as it may be, the worse it smells, you've got to think this, otherwise you wouldn't do it, the better it is for your plants. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a couple of weeks. I might ask Mike to smell it and see if it's working. Or I might do it myself. We'll see how bad it looks. Okay, so yeah, that's the start of my feed for this year. do and I'm not going to do it for too long because it oh heavens I've got I've got I've got bits of wood <laughs> and grass and all sorts has been kicked up from the streamer in my hair but never mind my excuse so if I keep doing that I haven't got nits um well I don't think I have um right yes greenhouse it has come to that wonderful time of year when we can start thinking about planting in the greenhouse and of course this, this year we've got um this double greenhouse. So I'm in the back half of it. That half, well, I don't know if you can, can you see on the camera up here, we've got the grapevine going right round, but I'm gonna be planting roughly half of my tomatoes in the greenhouse and the other half are going to go outdoors. I mean, they've all been sown, well, the varieties have been sown at the same time. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they do. And it, I would imagine the ones outdoors are going to crop a little bit later, which is good, because then we'll have a succession instead of a glut. We'll probably have just a long glut. Um, but what, what's happened in my absence is Mike has very kindly planted some mixed lettuce leaves just where the tomato was going to go. So I'm going to leave them in because actually that's fine, they can grow around them. But what I'm going to do today is Oh look, this is interesting. One second, where's my little thing? Even though Mike's been watering, oh, it's gone. Even though Mike's been watering these and the soil's been kept damp, there was a little red spider mite there and that is because it's too dry, I think. So obviously that's something we're gonna to have to look out for. They're very pretty though. Tiny, tiny, bright specks of red. Anyway, what I'm gonna be using, oh, I was gonna show you with tomatoes. Um, what I'm gonna be planting are oh, some of my fantastic Amish paste. These were the seeds from Richard and Paul. I think I could, to be honest, I could leave them longer in their pot, but I just think they're looking a bit floppy. They're not looking as good as they can. And you know why that is? It's because you see other people's online and uh, oh, I just wipe soil in my eye. And you sort of think, um, you know, they're sort of better than mine. So I think these are looking a little bit, maybe not floppy, maybe a bit flabby so i'm going to get look i'm going to give them a head start in here i've watered them already so the soil should be nice and moist i haven't looked at the root run there's a couple coming through the bottom of the uh, pots but they're not root bound but yeah i'm going to be using these plant halos now i bought these uh oh must be a few years ago now and I have used them every year and they're, they're good they're quite good what they do is you put your tomato in the middle it does allow you it says to leave about two inches can you see that 
about two inches around the you can't see a thing can you see that about two inches around the top sorry two inches from the top uh, so you can top up with compost because obviously as your tomato grows you can keep topping up the stem and all the hairs become roots so and that heads for a stronger plant so yeah it lets you do that but the most important thing is it's got this reservoir around the edge which you can just keep topped up with water and if you see that the reservoir is empty your plant needs watering it recommends that you water once a day which you would anyway and if it's as hot as it has been you'd be doing it twice a day but what happens then is the water runs down these six spikes into the soil so you're not watering from the top of the plant you're watering underneath so your roots will go looking for the water for the moisture and grow healthy and strong fantastic scientific explanation anyway I've got I've only got three because I never quite knew whether to invest in any more and to be honest that you get the pots that people have just cut the bottoms out of and they also allow you to top up with soil as the tomatoes growing to get the roots coming from the sides but they haven't got the added novelty of having a little reservoir so you're still going to be um, watering from the top so the idea of this is the water goes more directly to the roots but because Mike's lettuces are in the way I'm just going to have to put them where I can so I'm going to put one there I mean I need more really do I need more I'd like more I'd put it that way now if I was a savvy youtuber I'd be able to sort of say a name and be gifted things but I don't know how it works um I'm not savvy <laughs> okay so I'm putting these about over Mike's lettuce about yay far apart that's my microphone's just fallen off about yay far apart so that they've got about just over a foot between them what you do you just sort of angle them into the soil a little bit you have got these three support three cane supports around the edge which supposedly you can put your canes in like a wigwam to help the tomato grow up but to be honest I just find them a bit they're just a bit annoying I think they're a bit of a novelty I mean it does give you an option but I will just be putting a, a cane a normal cane in at the back of the tomato plant so I'm not going to use them but yeah in fact I'm going to move them further along one there nicely wedged in sorry lettuce one there nicely wedged in and one there and you can see really I've got room for at least another two there so now I've done that that's it I'm not going to do any more I'm not going to enrich the soil at all it's had um, really well rotted manure put on over the winter then it's had compost on the top um, and it's even had if you wonder what this is some packaging is sent in like the sheep's hair padding which is very good so that's good supposedly for keeping the slugs off as everything seems to be but if I shift yam down with my mic which is probably going to explode any minute now and we'll have a little look at my you see wellies weren't a good idea when I was going to be sitting like this that's the big one so look hasn't really got a root system yet all you proper gardeners are out there going to go what's she doing tell us to put that back in the pot it's not ready but I'm going to do it just going to do it anyway I've got loads more to plant I'll wait till their root systems are a little bit better but I'm going to put these in anyway okay so literally scraping the soil at the bit I'm going to take off the two bottom leaves I'll show you on this one taking off those seed leaves they're called seed leaves the first ones that grow the little ones that come up out the soil and get you all excited because they've germinated okay and pop that in there same with this one I mean that looks really sorry for itself that one won't do it any harm I might take these other lower leaves off as well actually look that poor little weedy thing that was a little flagpole there was a little flag in there um and yeah that now I'm going to bring the camera over and show you what I've done and what I'm going to do next
Okay, and this is where my microphone switched off. So I'm actually recording this the day after, but you can see here, I'm trying to remember what I did. I've literally just put some compost around the tomato plant, which is very interesting, I'm sure. And <laughs> it was quite difficult doing it one handed because clearly I've got the very wobbly camera in the other hand. But yeah, yeah, just top it up around the tomato. <coughs> Excuse me. Pressing it down. Oh, it's quite exciting doing it this way. And then obviously I need to leave um, that gap at the top. So I'm going to be able to keep topping up should I wish to. And there we go. And then what I'm doing here, I'm going to do a little bit of companion planting just by putting a shallow, I thought a curved ridge would be nice. Um, instead of just having them all along the edge, a little shallow drill and I'm going to direct sow some tagitis, which I think I show in a moment. Am I going to show them? Yes, I am. Tagitis, I think they're called golden gem. And to be honest, they're not a flower I'd grow in my garden. I mean, I love the calendula, the large mar marigold, but um, the tagitis themselves a bit too small and fancy for me however they are fantastic companion plants with tomatoes because they are supposed to deter whitefly and thrips and rabbits so if you've got a problem with rabbits in your greenhouse then you want to plant these little blighters yeah so just thinly putting them straight into the ground there we go you know, maybe I should do all my recording, all my narration afterwards, because I've never got quite an, as much to say, which is probably a good thing. I'd have some nice short videos. There we go, the la la la, planting the tagitis or tagites. Do you say tagites? Tagites? I've always called them tagites. Tagites. Don't know. Everyone's got their own way of saying things. Anyway, yeah, going to put them back now. And you can see in the background... Oh, no, hold on. I'm covering them up. <laughs> I'm covering them up. Very, very lightly there with the soil. Can I just point out the um, tomato in the background has not been topped up with compost because I ran out. So uh, that has gone back in the greenhouse. So don't worry about that one too much. And you can also see I've put the canes in for the tomato to grow up and to anchor the pots. Okay. Filling up the reservoir now. I'm just watering on the plants to uh, settle the soil a little bit, but then I'll fill the reservoir to halfway and just keep an eye and see how long it takes for it to go down. But I think that's probably going to do it now for the next day or two. Um, sprinkle a little bit over the marigolds, however you pronounce them. And yeah, that's another job done. We'll just have a quick look around the second greenhouse, the single greenhouse at the moment. And usually my greenhouse would be absolutely screaming out for space at the moment. But because, as I mentioned earlier, um, in an earlier video, we're going to be planting a lot of stuff direct. We're not too crammed. So just a very quick look. I'm going to point a name and move on. Cosmos. Sunflower. That's what I can remember the names. Onions, which to be honest probably won't grow in. Aubergine, Cosmos, Cosmos. Sweet peas, they're not looking very happy. Sweet peas that are looking a bit happier, but not as good as Monty Don's. Um, celeriac, Nicotiana, Gardener's Delight, Cheeky Prince, anything yet? No Cheeky Prince yet. Um, Neighbours courgettes, cucumber, don't worry we're nearly there, yuchikiguri, gardener's delight, spare cabbage, cosmos, we're going for a swing, and zinnia, and then over here, cabbage, victor squash, turks turban squash, turks turban, victor, cucumber, more cabbage from the neighbour, don't know what it is. Courgette, sprout. A cross of 
sun gold baby yellow tomatoes and chili and broccoli oh that's just coming today look at that okay next one sunflower 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 with sweet pepper in the middle <laughs> then sunflower 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 with some other tomatoes some peppers some chilies some petunias more tomatoes more cucumbers more pumpkins and some artichoke and at the very very end an allotment neighbour look we've got flowers first flowers on the strawberries but it just goes to show I believe that black bit in the centre is where the flowers have got frost damaged so I don't know how that'll go on to affect the actual fruit themselves you can see that one that's a newer flower and obviously we haven't had frost the last couple of nights it's been so warm but yeah these were one of the first ones so we did have warm days and uh, quite a sharp drop in temperature at night so hopefully it's not going to affect them too much oh so there we go another bit of a can you see me moment um yeah so a bit bitty today but actually just got loads of stuff done and i think i might have said this last time but i really mean it this time i'm starting to feel like we're actually catching up i'm starting to feel like we're actually doing things at the right time rather than panicking and trying to get things in i mean some things like <coughs> getting those tomatoes planted up in the greenhouse um yeah it's a bit early for it really those root balls weren't established enough but you know what i'm putting them in and I've got plenty more, I've got plenty more space. It's starting to feel like we've got a little bit of breathing room now and that's so lovely because I'm getting a chance to enjoy what we're doing rather than on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Although saying that, this, um, this time I'm aware there's been lots of bitty things going on. Um, I don't think I showed, no I haven't shown you the, the front of the allotment behind the greenhouse behind me as you walk in. <coughs> <clears throat> edged it with one of those log rolls that I'm very fond of and I'd put lots of plants in last year when we moved up so around about September that would move from the other allotment um oh actually including a fig tree from our backyard actually which I planted in and just left them there and really it was acting as I suppose like a, a nursery bed or a holding bed until I decided what I was going to do with them but they're all coming they're looking really good there's weeds coming as well but I'm getting rid of the weeds keeping on top of them and I, I'm forgetting things that I've put in like I did put some bulbs in I put some tulips in I haven't shown you them I'll show you next time um, the daffodils it's had these tiny daffodils the tete -a -tete going around the edge it's just looking lovely so it's like I'd put that in and forgotten about it but it's almost like that's just plodded on and it's just one of those symbols that yeah you know you give them the right conditions they look after themselves and yeah it's had to it's had to and it's actually doing very well so pleased with that pleased about the first couple of tomatoes in because i wasn't too happy about how they were getting in getting on in those pots i've got i don't know how many more in this greenhouse behind me ready to do but we'll just see how they get on it see if they get a better start or you know a bit of a a, a kick up the backside um but yeah yeah, Mike's nearly finished the path. That's going to be quite symbolic when that's done because that's taken about nine months. It just never ends. We keep finding bits of wood and thinking that might finish it off, but no, no, it just gets swallowed up and there's more. Um, we've done very well with our chippings, getting them from hither and thither. So uh, yeah, really pleased with that. I forget what else I was going to tell you. It's about, it must be about seven o'clock at night now. <coughs> And it has actually it's gone quite cloudy it's been a glorious couple of days too hot really too hot for me because i'm a right old moaner in the heat um but yeah it's starting to feel there's a bit of a wind picking up and a bit of a breeze and we are forecast to have thunderstorms tomorrow 
Now tomorrow at the moment is Wednesday, but by the time you see this, it might be today or it might be last year. <laughs> but I know that tomorrow, from where I'm sitting at the moment, we're predicted to have thunderstorms, which I love. I really get frustrated when um, you look on the weather chart and it says something like four o'clock tomorrow afternoon, which is what it says, thunder, thunder and lightning. You think, yeah, you look forward to it. And it's gone on to five o'clock and then six o'clock and then you could just get a light shower. You know, if we're gonna have a thunderstorm, let's get a proper one. Um, there's a name for people who like thunderstorms. Now I know Richard and Paul, I know you all know the name. I can't think what it is. It's very, very good. And I was just as pleased when I found out that as I was when <laughs> there was a name for people who like churchyards. Because I love churchyards as well. I think that's probably just being miserable. I don't know. A miserable, don't know. No, I'm not going to even guess. Anyway, so yeah, but you can see it's a bit of a breeze coming up now. The garden needs the rain. Um, our top bed where we're going to put the squash this year is as dry as old bones. Um, it hasn't had anything on it. It's been covered for most of the winter with black plastic and yeah, it's so, so dry. So the rain will do that good because we'll be able to start breaking that up because the squash will be going in soon. Um, Mike's actually, oh, I didn't show you, Mike's put in some roots. So we've got carrots, parsnips, beetroot. They've been planted up. I've planted more peas, radish, spring onion, all being planted up. Um, and yeah, we could do with the rain to really, really give them a good soaking and get the ground ready for a little bit, bit more soil action. That'd be nice. Anyway, I'm, I'm doing that witter thing again. I'm not going to be too long, <coughs> excuse me, because I don't know how many flies I've swallowed today, but there's certainly a few. They'd be quite cross. <coughs> That's what this is. Um, yeah, I know there's 101 things I could go on about, but I've got another video coming up quite soon. And I know what I'm going to do in that one. I'm planned. I'm doing really well. <laughs> I'm going to, right? If all goes to plan, I'm going to plant up my dahlias. I'm going to get the bean canes up and maybe plant the beans. I'm going to show you my little area here that we've got a trellis. We've put a trellis up. You haven't seen that yet. Uh, I'm going to be planting my sweet peas. Um, and the other structure, we've got an arch to put in front of the greenhouse. But all these things are for another day because I'm getting a bit chilly now and I haven't had any tea. So um, yeah, I shall love you and leave you and see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.